Remember the old red bridge? Oh, that was a, you get to go there in first grade. I believe you went just on, first grade, no, first grade you went just on the, the uh, yard, schoolyard. By second grade, maybe third, you got to go to the red bridge. And that is a pretty deal. We took our lunch, our picnic at the uh, last day of school. But you could go far as the red bridge. And we'd eat down underneath that red bridge. And gosh, for us to go as kids after we got older, wow, we'd go to the red bridge all the time. And that the tree they talk about there, you know, as you head out there, there was a fence, there was a road, and there was a lot of before the water. Now it's completely back. There's no fence. The, it's washed mm -hmm. away the tree. Well, my Aunt Bess was an artist. But very good, but I don't think sold a lot. But she came here once and spent a summer, and she painted that. And I have that picture of the red or the, uh, on the way to the Red Bridge. But and I, my dad said, oh, the reason she painted that, that was on my mother's homestead. So I've often wondered if she sometime took a homestead besides hmm. that, you know, you wonder, and they said you can go down to the courtyard. I'd like to look, but I know he said it. I heard him say that. But you wonder, he said, no, the reason she did that, that was the house that was on our homestead. They never lived there. But I think you could take out a homestead or something because the only place they ever lived was out by the river or in the hotel. But he, but, well, he built that house, that, that other place, but I never was in that house. Isn't that funny? I was in every house in Hinsdale. At one time or another, I was a visitor. You know, I was going somewhere all the time. And I don't think I was ever in that house. That's for Charlotte Wauber was born and raised, well, I don't know where she was born, but lived there always. It was Wabber's house, they called it, Mr. and Mrs. Wabber. And when my, Joanne and I went over to see Bob and Charlotte and talking, we mm -hmm. did, did all of the, you know, t telling all the different things and stuff. And uh, we spent an uh, afternoon there, we had the nicest time, and Charlotte was just healthy as could be to us. And Bob had some problems, maybe. I don't know what his problem had been just then. He would once broke his ankle or something, but we had a nicest afternoon visiting with Bob and Charlotte. And I think probably a couple weeks later, she got sick. I think she was sick before they ever went to Glasgow. Mm -hmm. They said that they were going to take him down. She'd gone, I guess, to Billings or something. She would had a stroke. I never did hear all that happened, but we had a nicest visit with them, and they both look good shape. Really, she looked not at all. Yeah, I had a good visit with them last year and interviewed them. And Did you? Yeah, yeah I, know. I know those interviews. I watched all yeah. those interviews. They yeah, were Bob so had some good stories about Monty. <laughs> oh, my brother. And he says, he told Bob, he, Bob says, Monty, Monty, shoot, shoot. He had kind of said, Monty said, I don't want to kill somebody that just wants a bologna sandwich. <laughs> he could have bring himself. Well, I don't think Monty didn't have that in him anyway. He couldn't have shot anything. He wouldn't go hunting with my dad. And he did, and he hit deer one, a, a duck one time, brought it home in a box and tried to save its life. <laughs> yeah, fed it. He, he was not a hunter. So I went with my dad always hunting. And, uh, you know, but I said, my God, if he'd got lost me or anything, I'd be still out there. <laughs> I was young. I loved to go hunting with him, you know. And he says, one time we were out hunting, he always take friends, they had to all go hunting. So we all were out there, and I'm just along, talking all the time. And he says, my God, they said, there's a game warden, Morris. They said, oh, geez, how many we got? Well, they had a couple of extra ducks. So he says, Des, give them to me. And he ran up and he threw them in the gutter, or up in the, the culvert. And I was couldn't already stand it. And here come the game warden. They were all laughing and talking. And I wanted to tell me, but we got more ducks up there. <laughs> and it was hard to repress myself. That was the way I was, you know. It would have served my dad right. You know, but I said, oh, my God, I still remember how close I was to telling him those ducks there were some other ducks up there. I wasn't very old. <laughs> I mean, I can remember yet the thinking I should do this because this isn't right. And uh, I didn't do it, but it's bothered me ever since. Still does a little bit, but uh, we love to go hunting. And he would go up north always. 
you get that green Ford that I wrote my name on. So the night, the day we were going to go, my mother fixed extra special, and she'd make mush and fry that and mush. She ever had fried mush and side pork. Well, I lo and behold, I've had a bad gallbladder since I was two days old, I guess. And I'd eat that stuff. It was so good. We'd have fried eggs and side pork and this fried mush. God, I thought it was great. And we wouldn't get very far out of town. And it seemed like the road went like this. And my mother didn't drive. That was her other little problem. And my brother was smart about it, but he he couldn't wait. So, oh, Monty wasn't feeling good. And he got out, and he oh, the left side, and he was up chucking. And I got on on the right. I'm up chucking. My mother said I wasn't feeling any good myself, <laughs> any too good myself. And the dog got diarrhea. He bought this real nice one through the sporting catalog, and the, and the dog was sick. My dad said, well, and this fun, you know. He bought brand new. He always had the best. He sold stuff in the bar there, you know, and he had all kinds of guns, and he got a full, his bullets and his, all his stuff, and everybody's vomiting. And it just could not. Well, then, if we did it at all, Dad say, I want to go just a little further. I'd like to go up to the crook in the road, more at Meldred, you drive. So my mother was, she barely zeroed the tool. She put it in gear. She never did get it out of that. Monty would sit in the back and say, Well, this is sheer fun. Aren't we having fun? And he could have driven it, you know. He was very old, but he's two years older than I was. So at any rate, my poor dad and his hunting trips. But every time he went, we'd all get sick, but this day it was particularly on everybody on every side of the car. My mother said, and I didn't feel any too well, but I didn't do one thing about it. <laughs> she just stayed quiet because everybody else was up chucking the dog had diarrhea. <laughs> I guess he didn't get anything. Yeah, he did love to go hunting, and he loved it. Oh, he went to, one time he went fishing down to Vandalia. Damn so we always get a pack of lunch and get everything ready to go. He's all for go. He's got fishing hats. He's always had the best, you know, they're selling, and he loved to get it. And he got a brand new rod and reel, and everything is beautiful. And he got out on the dam, and he, he gets this thing, and he goes, Whoosh, and he threw the whole thing over the dam. It got away from him, and he threw all his new equipment right over there. He said, well, we might as well go home. <laughs> I don't know, I've often wondered if anybody ever found all that equipment. Brand new. Brand new, he threw it right over that dam. And that's the only time I ever remember being to the dam. You know, is that funny? You, you hear about Vandalia Dam, but I don't remember. We used to take a boat. He had a boat for a while. We could go as far as Vandalia Dam and then turn around. But he said, he and uh, Pippin, uh, he was a contractor. He'd move dirt and stuff. I don't really know. They lived up by that uh, house across, that barn across the street. But he bought a big boat, pretty big boat, and it was nice. And my dad had a big motor. He didn't have too big a boat. So they thought one day to put the big motor on the small boat and see how fast they could go. Da Pippin and Dad. And I remember my mother's dad, we were watching it, and they went, and they just went straight in the air and turned over and poof, turned upside down. And my dad went in, he said, into that mud in the bottom of the river. And that was the end of his fishing hat. He had a hat with a lot of different fish things on it and stuff. And he said, it's buried down there in that river somewhere. Well, of course, my mother thought my dad was going to die, and she started bawling and carrying on. And my God, I couldn't, I'll never forget it. She was so... That my dad was her whole life, you know how that is, and no matter what, that was it. He was right about everything, and uh, she would try to protect you. He had a little bit of a temper sometimes, and she didn't know who to, to go for. Then she would try to protect me if I got too bad. I broke the top of the convertible one time, and I heard a lot of words about that. But she said, well, Peggy didn't mean to do it, you know. Now, Morris, take it easy. You know, this is not something that she did on purpose. And <laughs> how it is when you're a kid, and we had a carload of people. And I, I wouldn't even want to do that anymore and take a bunch of people to the hot water wells and convertible. You know, it scares me to death to think about it. Somebody fall out or have a wreck or something. <laughs> but it's sure fun then. Life was 
life was the ball, really, for another truth. Yeah. Did you guys ever go up to Genevieve? Oh, God, no. She, she's meant to tell me not to tell. So that was the one I just received the message. It's true. <laughs> Don't we get to tell that story? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I've heard plenty of stories about Genevieve that were. I've never been there yet. before, and I'll never go there again. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Yeah. It was a terrible situation. And I've, I've forgiven the other person involved. Okay. So, when you went to school, it was in the, the old two, two story school? <laughs> it's the only thing. Two first two grades on the bottom floor, and the third and fourth, the next one, and then uh, the you start up the stairs. First you go up the left side for the the next grades and the other side, and that big kid's coming down. And oddly enough, living in the hotel, the older kids kind of scared me. You know, they could talk to little kids. They said they'd talk to them. Come to me, I didn't want anything to do with them. I wasn't sure about big kids. You know, isn't that funny? And I know that the big kids went up the stairs, the older kids, and I, I didn't feel like to be around them at all, really. But uh, it was it was just a wonderful place, you know, who, who would ever think of. And we, we graduated from there. Mm -hmm. And we had the little gym. They didn't play basketball there then. We had the school plays. That was one of my things. I love the school plays. Then we had the big gym. And... Uh, they fill it up all the time. Well, everybody, not as much now, but that was the thing everybody was involved in. You know, the, uh, the parents all came and they're all interested, but I think even more so with Stephen being coached when I was here before, I said sometimes I'd get in trouble for some things he'd done. You know, how they treat, they're quite conscious of what happens to their kids? And I said, he told me, now I said, now mom, I'm going to coach Whitewater, say, go and Hinsdale, and you'll have people from everywhere on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what your son did? He said, well, <laughs> I'm so glad I could do anything that it didn't bother me, you know. But it was fun to watch it. I just loved it. I went to one in, uh, uh, Fraser, was it? Fr no, uh, mm, Fraser's. Nashua, it's Seiko, Fraser, is it Fraser and Seiko, Fraser, the towns. So you got Seiko, us, Glasgow. Oh, no, but going this uh, way. Whitewater, Dodson. 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 Dodson, isn't that funny? It's been a while. Went to Dodson. And I'd never been there before. I didn't know what school was. When we were in school, they didn't take us to the games, anybody. Even cheerleaders, we didn't go to the games. We went to the tournaments. But we never went to the games. Hmm. Yeah, that uh, I suppose if the parents drove you or something, but they didn't have a bus for the kids to go. And I'd never been to the Dodson School, and that was fun. We were watching, and a, and a woman sat next to me. She sat down beside me, and and Stephen was having fun. He was a little different than he was having a lot, a lot of fun. He'd, make these kids do things. They told him, he's out to get, he'd tell these kids what to do, and they said, you stay in your own deal. He would go up and down the floor and yell at those kids. And he's just having fun getting them going, but no, you sit down, stay there. And uh, gave him a technical or something. And the little woman sat next to me, and she said, mm, my goodness. She said, uh, he's, is he kind of a hard kid? Is he kind of on her? And I said, no. No, he's, there's nothing. And I said, and then the referee yelled at him, going to give him a technical. And, then, and she said, my goodness. And I said, oh, don't worry about it. And I said, that's my son. He's just having fun. And she said, oh, well, that referee's my son, but he's not the referee that gave him the thing. She wanted to know. <laughs> she said, he looked deep over and big edge. No, he's not the one that, you know, gave him the technical. They all thought that was so cute. She was trying to protect her kid, and I'm trying to say, oh, Steve wouldn't do that. You know, he's just having fun, and it's kind of cute to, how you get involved in it, you know. It's fun to watch. Fun to watch how they, but sometimes the mother wasn't too happy, and they might tell me, too, you know. He said, you're going to have him from all over now, Mom. <laughs> it won't be just him to be mad at you. Uh -huh. And I had fun watching it. It really was fun those kids, and he has such a good attitude now. He said, I don't care what they do except, but I want them to be good men. You know, 
to 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 take mm -hmm. each kid's got some of them got faults, but I don't want to want them making fun of anybody or anything. You know, he's teaching them how to behave, and that they can't realize some of them still think you shouldn't. You know, if you don't put my kid in, that's a bad deal and that kind of stuff. But I wouldn't be a good mother to sit there if it got real hot pressured. <laughs> I'd be involved down on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> my kid. So. Where'd they used to have the old rodeos? Were they across the tracks? Oh, or? They, you know, I remember them going uh, out towards Seiko. There was a place out there they had one. And then, uh, it's an odd thing that I can remember that. And I've got, I probably all this history, you'd love to see some of these rodeo things I've got. Uh, when Dad was in it, they had everything, and then they even had an old timers, and with all these old fellas that you think of now, you know they're very old part of history. But the the whole thing, Dad wrote in every participated in everything. Did Didn't that funny? They would just take their cars and make a circle. That's the first one. They had more pointies than that, and they didn't have any deal, so they just put a circle around of cars, and that would. They had quite a time doing it, but. Uh, We've got pictures of him, and, and I've got a picture of the school. Do you have that big picture of the school? I'm not sure. So why didn't you get that all sitting on the dresser? And that other picture right there, I think that's Haver, Montana, maybe. I just got that one. It was one that was a big roll, and it was all broken, so I had a guy fix it for me. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to. Great Northern See, I think maybe Yeah, that Haver. would be Haver. Yeah. Well, Dad, I can see Dad. There's Morris right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle thing. He never missed one. And then this is the school. Somebody gave that to me one year. Maybe that's one they... Okay. That's... Did you have that one up? I can't remember. I think you might have. So what's that tall building in to the left there, I wonder? I think that's the pump house. The pump house? We could hear the pump house yeah. from the... School, you could hear it. And yeah, that was back before they had any of the additions on, wasn't it? Because then they added what's now they, the library and the shop and all the that library. stuff. Oh, no, there was not a shop. And there was no library. But they did add the big gym. We didn't mm -hmm. have that at first. And this, somebody said that was to give people jobs. See, that was built in 29. And then they, they built that thing on later on. But oh, I always cool. kind of remember it. I think that should be in a museum or something somewhere, you know, some of that stuff. They uh, have a well, Don't lot go tell them Peggy Cornwell and Kitty Lou that. They might take it off your hands. <laughs> well, she probably, Peggy knows that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is a lot of stuff that they put down there that uh, somebody took a whole bunch of pictures down there and they said, well, I won't tell you the name, but they said that was theirs, but there wasn't. They went up into that apartment after my dad died and they took a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Picture old pictures he had and stuff. Yeah, I know Which they is got all right. a. They put them down there. I know they have a new addition at the museum. I haven't gotten to go see yet. I heard that they recreated uh, Dr. Cockrell's office. Oh God, yes, that was there at one time. I can remember sitting in that chair. It had steel or something, you know, and a little round deal. And I thought he was a big man, and he was very short. And I, 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 you had to, you had something. My mother said, "Go to doctor." I, they didn't. My mother didn't take me. I'd go over there and wait for Dr. Cockrell, and I always had tonsillitis. And he said, "And I can't get your mother to take these tonsils out." He was so upset. He loved to take out tonsils. He'd take out oh, half of seven Duncan girls at one time, I think. Always crazy to take out tonsils, but. My mother had her tonsils taken out, but she was little, and they wrapped her in a sheet and scared the hell out of her. And then they did it again. They grew back, and she had to have it done twice, and she made up her mind, never is she going to do that to any of her kids. So they did. Can you take out some words that I said that I didn't mean to say? But yeah, I can at any rate, <laughs> we didn't get them out. That was a real problem for Dr. Cockrell. But we'd go over then. I remember going over, and I cut my knee at school. And he clamped it. He had a clamp thing. It looked like it when they put this clamp in rather than stitches. And he'd just about get ready to clamp her, and I'd give him a shove. And he said, and you do it one more time, and I'm going to send somebody to get your dad. 
<laughs> he brought out the big guns. And I said, I really wasn't scared of my dad. I would have told my dad, don't you touch me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and Dr. Cockrell uh, he delivered me in the hotel, Mrs. McManus, the one down, that little McManus house. Uh, she and her husband was kind of a recluse. They thought he was in on that the train robbery or mm. something. Don't remember my dad ever saying anything. I would say something about, did that really happen? And he said, Peggy, you hear a lot of things. And that's all he handled. When I went to him with something gossip, I said, did that happen? He said, you hear a lot of things. And that was it. He didn't talk about it. But they, he was quiet, kind of reckless, the guy ended up. Whatever happened, I have no idea. But he didn't, Mr. Stubbrudder would help him out a little bit. I think he was Catholic. And he would go sit down and see about him. And he had some horses that he kept out in the, the behind their place. But you didn't see Mr. McManus but after she died. But she was the dearest, sweetest woman. And she'd come up to see me in the hotel, I suppose, because I was one of her babies or something. And uh, he was just, she was just the sweetest woman. I can't remember what she